And thank you everyone for your time today. As Noah said, my name is Jack. I'm an Australian who works in AI. So you've hit your quota today in me and Pip. And today I'm really excited to introduce you to the most important audience you will never meet. And that is really the large language models that are rewiring the internet. So as soon as my slides come up, you're gonna see a dramatic reveal. And then we're gonna start talking through the implications for marketers. So I want you to think about that audience. And particularly when you think about the great research from the new consumer about how younger users are starting to ask these large language models as a personal assistant, the good news for marketers is it's a pretty tight audience. Realistically, you can think about those four models behind me on the screen. You've got Google's Gemini as the natural evolution of search. One billion people in 100 different countries see the answers that Gemini generates every single month. Next to it, you've got Meta AI. It's got around 600 million monthly active users. It's in your news feed, sits at the top of your Instagram DMs. Mark Zuckerberg is on record with his ambition to make that your personal assistant. Shout out to the Amazon team, if you are still here. Yes, of course you are. Bam. So that is Rufus. See, we finally got it. That is Rufus. That is the last thing that millions of people will check before they check out. If you're a marketer, think of how influential that model's opinion is. The last thing before you click buy. And of course, last but not least, you have OpenAI. 300 million monthly active users, but a much greater web of influence through their publisher partnership program. Big publishers provide content to train those models and citations. So behind me, you've got about three quarters of the Western internet. And as a marketer, you have to understand how those models think about your brand, your competitors, and your products. Because I like to think about them as members of your audience. And really, we're going from a world of chatbots to influencers, because each one of those models has a meaningfully different opinion based on how it's been trained, who owns it, and what content it can access. But today, shout out to the guy from Langchain, and a lot of the great stuff you heard around agents you start to see how these models go from influencers to intermediaries. You saw that Instacart example. Think about that use case. I want you to go buy me dinner. How does that agent think about what you want to eat? Which brands it should choose? Think about perplexity with their shopping agents. Open AI with operator. We're rebuilding the internet for a totally different audience. And increasingly, it's the one who'll be deciding which brands go into your basket. So, Operator launched, what, like two weeks ago? You might remember that. It happened just pre-DeepSeek, if anyone is keeping track. And it triggered an enormously useful set of tweets. So over here on the far right, you have someone who's realizing their website doesn't load in Operator. That's pretty existential. If that agent can't even get to your website, then you will never be chosen. On the somewhat more theoretical side, you have the great Ethan Mollick, who started to realize that the companies that build and run these agents have their own commercial partnerships. And these agents have preferences. So they're routing new paths to purchase for different categories based on those models themselves. So of course, you have to understand how these models think about your brand. This is where I'm gonna do something incredibly risky, given today, and toggle. It worked, all right. This is where share a model comes in. This is a tool that we have built, as Noah described, is a crazy idea that has now been used by some of the world's biggest brands. In fact, the brands that use this platform spend $30 billion a year on marketing. So this is becoming a critical way for them to understand this new audience. It's really simple. It works a lot like a survey, but the respondents of the survey are those large language models. So I'm gonna show you an example from the airline category, because you can imagine next time I wanna book a flight here from London, I might ask an agent to do it, and I need to know which airline that agent prefers, or better yet, what airline it thinks I prefer. So we poll a number of different large language models, each one of them corresponding to a different part of the internet. Gemini is the evolution of search and increasingly YouTube. Llama is a uh, window into meta AI. Anthropic is a window into the Amazon ecosystem. And we ask them questions every single day to help us understand how they think about the category. Now at this level, I'm just looking at awareness. You can see that up in the top left. This is a simple way to think about top of mind awareness for AI. When I'm asking questions about which airlines to recommend, I wanna understand which airlines they're referencing 
and critically, how prominent those references are. So let's pick on someone. Let's pick on Delta. In this case, I can see I've got a mention rate of 91%. That means 91% of the time I'm asking for recommendations around airlines, they pop up. We've got an average position of seven, though. That's pretty far down the list if you think about the way search works. Or critically, in a world where you're going to be talking to an agent, it's unlikely they're going to give you more than two, maybe three options. So optimizing your way to the top left of that graph is going to be the future of a lot of what we do as marketers. Then you have to understand the differences between these models. I genuinely think there are some ab personalities. Earlier in the day, we talked about being nice to the model. As a marketer, that is not just a nice to have. You have to understand how they think about your brand. And here you can see that these models have meaningfully different preferences. So let's pick on someone different. I'm going to go for American. Here you can see, again, a pretty good share of the top recommendations in this category when we look at Meta's Llama, which is the inside of Meta AI. But that doesn't really translate when it comes to Gemini. Now, considering as a marketer, that's probably two thirds of your budget in search and social. If you're losing in one of those areas, you're going to then lose the opportunity to compete for those tickets. It's one thing to understand which brands I recommend, but I'm also a planner by a trade, and this is where I want to dig down into perception, because I want to understand how these models think about that category. So here I'm not just asking which brands would you recommend, I'm asking well, what do you think of them? What are their pros and their cons? And models love to talk, they never shut up. So we take all of the words that they use and analyze the patterns to understand how they've been trained and how they're likely to react in the world. So we can see here, for example, that when we talk about Singapore Airlines, nearly a third of the time these models recommend Singapore Airlines, they reference comfort or concepts related to it. Now, that is fantastic for Singapore. It's absolutely shit for Lufthansa because they look pretty uncomfortable from this perspective. And again, if my agent is out there thinking about Jack, He's about six foot three. I don't know why I'm talking in the third person, but I am. In that case, I have a real, real focus on comfort in a flight. I don't want to be in a ship plane. So my agent is likely going to start skewing towards that end of the spectrum. Similarly, we can see the uh, negatives here. Are these airlines perceived as inconsistent? Do they have a poor network? What about pricing? All of this is updated every single day as we talk to these agents. Oh, sorry, these models are power them. If you're curious about how a model defines these concepts, you can click into that cluster and see the specific words they use. And even better, you can click into a specific term and see here, for example, when they talk about entertainment, which is a key part of experience, they're more likely to reference Emirates. And that's the future of SEO, thinking about how you can start to articulate the benefits of your product in the language of these large language models. And as I said at the start, these models have meaningfully different preferences and personalities. So here, I can cut it by model, by theme, by brand. And in this case, again, I'm thinking, OK, if I'm Emirates, I get a decent amount of references here for reliability on Meta AI, but that doesn't even track on GPT-4.0. So again, as a marketer, am I missing out? Are there blind spots here where these models start to perceive my brand based on how they've been trained and what they're going to be recommending to real people? Now, just want to show you two more things. Because the most logical question a lot of people have is, OK, they think Singapore Airlines is more comfortable than Lufthansa. Why? How was that opinion formed? And that's where we track the domains that these models cite as their sources. Gives you a good idea of how they navigate the web. So here I can see the top 10 websites that they reference. There'll be some familiar spots within there. But then I can scroll down and see by model, by website, are there certain ones like Kayak? Everyone references that. Skytrax, no, nope, there's a big gap in the middle. That might mean it's not part of that model's consideration set. So if I'm thinking about where my ads go, that'll be seen by these agents, that's my next media plan. I have to put my brand where they're going to find it. Final step on this, of course, is thinking about how these models start to perceive every asset you make. Now, this is particularly risky as a demo because I did it while you were all having coffee. But this is where I toggle over from that half of the tool, which shows you how a model perceives a category, to then show you how a model sees your brand. Because multimodality, the ability for a model to read text, understand imagery, audio, and video, is really going to be the most powerful weapon you have as a marketer. From this day on, every asset that you publish is a brief to someone else's model. So you have to understand what those assets are saying about your brand. I took a bunch of Super Bowl ads. 
And in this case, I want to understand if Gemini thinks they're any good. You can upload those videos in about five to six minutes. We use those models to analyze every frame within that video, the audio, the captions, and the context. And this is the future of pre-flight. Because why would you launch an ad that might piss off a model that powers millions of agents that represent your customers? And the power of these models is insane. I don't know if anyone's seen the Bud Light ad. Here we can upload a series of criteria that we're curious about. It could be emotional impact, engagement, creativity, or humor. But this is straight from Gemini. And look at the actual specificity of it. It knows that within that ad, there's a gag about people using leaf blowers to shoo people out of a house party. And it understands the comedic timing of that gag. So think about every time when you're in a writer's room or you're thinking about, do I find this funny? Maybe the better question is, does AI find that funny? Everything you publish is a brief to someone else's model, and this is the only way you're gonna find out what it says. Let's go, mic drop, man. <laughs>